Welcome to Philly Prime. I'm Dave Schratweiser. Thanks for joining us this week. A lot of news in the Philly mob world this week. The start of what looks like some uh, interesting pleas going down, and we're going to discuss it this week with my partner from MobTalkSitDown.com, author, journalist, teacher. He does it all. George Anastasia. George, thanks for coming back on the show. Appreciate it. Okay. Happy to be here, Dave. George, I guess you might call this some offers they just couldn't refuse. Uh, federal prosecutors put on the table some interesting uh, plea bargains for uh, Steve and Sonny Mazzone. Uh Dominic Grandy has uh, pled guilty a couple of weeks ago, another high-ranking uh, mobster. What do you think about these deals? The deal looks like Sonny Mazzone, who pled on Wednesday to a racketeering conspiracy count, looks like less than 24 months. I think his ranking was 17. Uh, and Steve Mazzone, from what we're hearing, is looking at anywhere from 45 to 60 months. What do you think about those offers and the fact that they took them? Well, I think the key was once Dominic pled out and, and that was resolved, I think then it was a question of were the numbers going to be good enough. And if, if Stevie gets on the low end, even close to that low end, it's not a bad deal at all. And Sonny, Sonny's got two. He's got no priors. Sonny will be out. You know, you do 85 percent. He ends up in a he'll be in a halfway house probably in less than a year. Yeah. So then it's not bad deals. The, the, you know, the big issue is what we talked about before. Um that tape, the making ceremony tape, was going to bury these guys. Yeah. And I think they realized it. So it just became a leverage game. Once Dominic was out of the picture, then they could start talking serious about what are the numbers going to be. And the, the numbers are really not that bad. I mean, nobody wants to go to prison, but no. in the greater scheme of things, it's not a bad deal. And nobody in, in that crew wants to plead guilty either. They don't want to accept another another conviction. For Sonny Mazzone, it's his first. For Dominic Randy, it's his first. For Steve, it's his second, at least his second that I'm aware of. Um, that's not good if something else comes later. So, but uh, you know these guys. I know these guys. They don't want to take a guilty plea. And you're right. They don't want to go to prison, especially at their age, the late 50s, some touching on 60s. Dominic is in his early 40s. Well, I mean, for Dominic and Sonny, it's, it's the first time out. And you've talked about this before. For the feds, it's a win in the sense that now they've got them. You know, their guidelines are going to be different if something else comes along. They've established that. For Stevie, I think it just was a question of a number. I mean, you know, if you listen to that tape and listen to it or read the transcript of that tape, he buries himself. I mean, he's running a making ceremony. He's telling guys, do this, do that. Report to me, you know, plant the flag, that kind of stuff. Where are you going to go with that? We've talked about it again and again. So I I think given the situation, he had two good attorneys, so you, you can be sure they got the best deal possible. I think given the situation, it was probably the best move to make. Yeah. You know, the other thing is, I was thinking about this the other day. This is this has played out like a New York case. If you remember in the Joey Merlino, John Stanford, Ralph Natalia era, there never were plea offers made to the major guys. Never. The trials always happened. And it was up in New York where they, and guys down here would complain about it. Look, in the Southern District, they plead out. They get five years, they get six years. We're going to trial. Um, the, the offers were never that good down here. Mm. And I think it's changed in the sense that, um, one, I think you got a different administration in the U.S. Attorney's Office. And two, I think these guys are not priorities anymore. So if you can get it off the table, clean up the case, you get a win in that, you get a, a guilty plea, a conviction, away you go. And I think yeah. that's where we are. And while I'm hearing that, uh, you know, they're happy they're getting, I think they're 13 out of 15 defendants at this point, or 12 out of 15. One defendant died, Kenny Arabia, early mm-hmm. on. Uh, there's two left on the table that are Joe Servideo and Danny Malatesta Sr. They're still working on on their deals. But I don't think there's total happiness uh, at all levels of the federal prosecution here um, with these kind of numbers. I think they would like to see some, you know, other things be included, relevant conduct. We saw that with Pete Tuccio up in New York. While they didn't indict him on two or three other shakedowns, they included it in the information and that bumped up his number to a 10, which he took, which some think was pretty foolish, but he took it. So I'm not sure everybody's a thousand percent pleased at the prosecution level with those kind of numbers. Probably not. But, uh, you know, you factor in the COVID situation, Mm -hmm. uh, the reluctance to go to trial, all the dynamics in that. It it, it probably realistically makes sense to do that. And the other thing that sits back there is, I don't know, you know, some of these guys are still working cases. And the, the, the way they would look at it is, all right, we got a guilty plea here. If we get these guys in something else and we want to get them in something else, the number is going to be higher. So that's that's the takeaway from that. Even if you don't like 
the fact that that Stevie's going to get oh, what, four or five years. Um, Dominic's getting what did he get? Six and a half years. Yep. There may be another day, and if there's another day, the numbers are going to be higher because of this. Day. I, I think that's the way they look at it. Yeah, interesting. You mentioned the uh, induction ceremony and Sonny Mazzone's, uh sentencing plea. I mean, a plea agreement. Excuse me. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, the prosecutor said it's 12 pages long and where they right. lay out the facts of the case include a nice little snippet from the induction ceremony uh, where you have ML, who they don't name, but we believe is Mike Lancelotti, right. JL, who they don't name, but we believe is Joe Legambi, Stevie, and some others talking there. And not only do they do what you said, I mean, they lay out why they're there and what they're doing and plant the flag. And we're the only outfit in town and we're always going to be the only outfit in town. But then they, they talk a little bit more about who's with who and they kind of lay out the lineup and kind of define the family right there. Yeah. Here's here's this crew. You're with this crew. He's with me. Sonny's with me, that kind of stuff. And, and, and again, those kind of tapes are damaging, even though they don't speak to a specific crime, they talk, speak to an organization and when you're making a case against mobsters and you want to show the jury here's the mob what better tape is there than this tape the other the other thing that i always find hilarious is mm. uh they have cs the confidential uh what does that stand for confidential, source confidential, confidential source. everybody in the freaking world knows it's anthony persiano yeah I mean, so the only people that don't know are the people that will be reading that for the first time but all the guys at that making ceremony know who was at the table and know who said what. As soon as they see that transcript, there's no secret that it's Persiano. It's Anthony Persiano. That, yeah. That's the other element in all of this. That another reason I think why the feds maybe made a, a generous offer in terms of the numbers. Hmm. They don't want to put Persiano on the stand. They don't want to use him as a witness. He's got so much baggage. Uh, it, it would be it would divert a from slugfest the fest is what it would yeah. be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So. From that perspective, I think as well, the feds decided, let's take what we can get here and then, you know, fight the battle another day. Yeah. Interesting also in uh, Sonny Mazzone's uh, plea agreement was uh, discussions of a person number four who is involved in borrowing money uh, yeah. from Sonny Mazzone through, it looks like, Joe Servidio, uh, possibly Victor DeLuca. Uh, right. DeLuca's already pled. Servidio is the one fighting here. Uh, that kind of thing to to get the charges against him dropped, and then he wanted to be severed from the Mazone brothers and everybody else. Uh, we'll wait and see what happens there. But this person number four is that an undercover FBI agent? Is that someone else who is cooperating? But it sounds like those conversations might be ha have been memorialized as well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's the other thing with this investigation. I think, and you know, from from our perspective, from a media's perspective, it's unfortunate. We may never see or hear some of these yeah. because if you don't go to trial, you don't bring indictments, a lot of the stuff is on the public record. So, yeah, there may be a lot of stuff floating around out there. At this point, we're not aware of it. Mm. There are no further charges. We'll probably never. Let me ask you a question, George. Sometimes, uh, you know, tapes are handed over to defendants like this and they listen to all of them. And there might be some tapes in there that they've they're saying some things that they really don't want aired in a public courtroom about their colleagues. Uh, could that be a possibility here, too, that there's a couple of things in here, and I'll get to one that I think you and I have already talked about before, but, you know, you're afraid maybe you said the wrong thing, like a Tommy Del Giorno situation. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, we don't know specifically, but, yeah, th these guys hear all the tapes. They know what the feds have, and there may be some tapes where the guy says, oh, man, I, I, I don't want anybody to know I said that. Yeah. And, and that plays into, I guess, the decision to, to cut a deal and, and to avoid trial and yeah. to keep those tapes from going any further than the discovery process. Now, right. in the old days, uh, and it's difficult, but when, when there are a lot of defense attorneys in the case and multiple defendants and everybody's got access to this kind of stuff, there's a chance it can get leaked to the media. Yeah. When there's only one or two defendants, it's not likely that anybody's going to be leaking anything. Yeah. Who knows how this plays out? I think the days of leaking that stuff to the media, though, George, are over because uh, you see now sometimes, you know, you and I are very good at what we do. Uh, but I got to say, I think the federal government has, as soon as these things come out, they slap these kind of gag orders on this and ask the judge to seal them. 
so nobody can see them. You can't take them from the lawyer's office. You have to go to the lawyer's office to listen to the tapes, read the evidence. You can't photocopy it and take it home. You can't do any of those things, uh, all to avoid what you just talked about. Yeah, and, and it's, it is unfortunate from our perspective, but I guess from the process of justice, it's it, it's the way it is. It's, maybe it's the way it should be. Yeah. I don't like it, but that's the reality. But. No, no reporter would like that, George. We used to have fun with those kind of things, you know, and they made for great stories because they gave you kind of an inside look at really what was going on behind the scenes uh, with these guys. And listen, let, let's throw in here uh, their line that the induction tape really doesn't mean anything because belonging to an organization is not a crime. Uh the government contends that it, it it may not be a crime, but it sets up a crime and it sets up a criminal enterprise that if I make money and I pass it up the line to you, therein lies the crime, racketeering, conspiracy and racketeering. Exactly. And that's what the problem is. You, you can say a defense attorney can say all he want. It's not a crime to be a member of the mafia. Well, the jury's listening to that tape and hearing and seeing other evidence about an organization. That tape has has power. Hmm. Simple as that. Yeah. George, uh, we talked about tapes, and let's talk about this for a minute, because after Dominic Randy got uh, uh, his plea, guilty plea hearing and pled uh, on the 25th of May, the government released the plea agreement again. Um, and we all know there's, there's some tapes against Dominic involving drug deals that were very damaging to him, probably had a lot to do with him pleading guilty and getting six and a half. You and I heard or at least read a transcript in court documents that were made public, part of a conversation between he and I believe it's Anthony Persiano, and they're talking about pills, and Dominic is making an overture, uh, oh, if we could get those pills, I can move a lot of them. Yeah. Um, and there's, the quote was kind of chopped off in the first two court documents that that conversation was included in but not in the one that just came out in his plea agreement it goes like this if this is dominic supposedly talking allegedly talking to i believe it's persiano if you can get them to me meaning the pills we can make our own money me and you will split it down the middle what's your read on that and it could go two ways (laughs) go ahead you know that's the kind of stuff that Dominic doesn't want a jury to hear because it it substantiates his involvement in the drug underworld. More importantly, he probably doesn't want to hear his friends hear that because, you know, there are other tapes where he's talking about everything gets kicked up. Everything goes up. You got to you give me a piece. I got to give somebody else a piece here. He's saying, no, 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 we're, we're going to this is a side deal between you and me. That's a kind of a violation of what the rules are supposed to be. So that's a tape that's damaging on a couple different levels with Dominic and it may be one of the things that precipitated uh, his decision to take a plea. Yeah, you would think. And in the old days, George, uh, comments like that caught on tape would, would get you what from the hierarchy of the Philly mob? Well, I mean, especially in the Scarfo era. I mean, you know, everybody's got to kick up. That's the whole point of all of this. Money flows up. Mm. And this was an example of money, the money that wasn't going to flow. Mm. And I think it would have pissed some people off. And, and there would be a, some kind of price to pay for that. Yeah, this comment, we can make our own money, me and you will split it down the middle, doesn't sound like that's getting kicked up. Now, let's be Dominic for a second, and maybe he's just doing that for the sake of getting the deal done, and then he's going to pass it up. But that raises all new other questions. That's drug money at that point. Well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, that conversation puts Dominic in the middle of a a potential drug deal. And if you're trying to show the jury that this guy's in the drug underworld, that tape establishes that, Mm. you know, even if the deal doesn't go down, that's a conspiracy to deal drugs, right? Yeah. Interesting. Steve Mazzone on a tape says, warns the newly inducted members that this is not your money. It's (laughs) our money. All of it comes here. And he says, again, this money is not yours. Well, I mean, that, you know, that's the thing that, that, and that sometimes people lose sight of that. This is a financial operation. This whole point of all of this is to make money. That's what it's about. And some guys lose sight of that. Some guys, you know, they're still in the dream world of men of honor and omerta and all of that. This is a business. Hmm. And that's one of the reasons I think we've had second, third generation. So many guys cooperate because for them, the mafia is not a way of life. It's a way to make money. And when they get jammed up, 
And it's a business. They make a business decision. Now, yeah. How do I cut my losses? You raise your hand and you cooperate. Yeah. We see that again and again and again. Yeah. Not here, though. You won't see any cooperating deals in this indictment at all. Uh, at least not none that we've been told group. about. No, no. But I think, you know, they already have Persiano on board and, and mm-hmm. uh, that's all they really needed. I don't think they're taking a deal from anybody else. Yeah. Although some of these guys have knowledge, I think, of homicides that the feds would like to solve. I, that's the only thing. That's what they've got to barter with. But none of these guys got jammed up significantly, I think. Mm-hmm. And Six that le- years is a long time, but it's not, you know, it's not a lifetime. Yeah, yeah that kind of leads me to my, my next question. Um, at the end of the day, did the feds get enough out of all the taxpayer dollars they spent monitoring these guys over the last five years, wiretapping them, converting those wiretaps into transcripts, prepping for trial. You know, we hear Eddie Jacobs, John Maringolo, Lou Busico, Brian McMonigle, all the lawyers say repeatedly, look at the millions of dollars that the federal government spent here trying to get these guys on tape and take them down. In your opinion, did they get enough out of this? Uh, but I think they got enough in the sense that they put everybody on notice that they're still out there and that anything you're doing, we're watching. And there's a benefit to be had by that. I, I have one investigator tell me it's a game of cops and robbers, mm-hmm. just cops and robbers. And, and you got to keep at it. And sometimes you win big and sometimes you win little, but you got to win. And in this case, it's a win, but it's not a big win. Yeah. Uh, and from the wise guys perspective, some guys were saying all along, this is nothing more than a gambling case. Mm. Well, that certainly applied to, to Stevie and his brother. It did not apply to Dominic and Cerviti on those guys. Yeah. That was a drug case. Yeah, DeLuca's got DeLuca's getting 10 years. He's doing five concurrent. Uh, Carl Chianese got five more years, but he's concurrent. Um, so what John you, Michael yeah, Payne but, is looking at a 10-year sentence as well. I mean, th- those, are, those are big numbers for those guys, but they're not high-ranking Philadelphia mob guys. And Dominic's so sentence trade-off? is in the middle, what, six and a half, right? Yeah. So. What's, what's the trade-off? Was it worth the time and effort? Mm-hmm. And I think I, I think here, if you if you want to analyze this whole investigation, yeah, I think where from the federal perspective where things went off the rails is when they decided Persiano's the guy we're going to use, and they didn't pay enough attention to what else Persiano was doing. Yeah, and well, so he got them the tapes. He also got them a bag full of crap that came along with it. Yeah, and 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 that was the problem. Is they're, they're in a situation where we can't really use this guy. Now what? Yeah. Let's take the best deal we can get. I think their hope all along was they were going to be able to flip somebody who could give them something about some homicides. That's always the goal in this thing, and, and it didn't reach that level. Yeah. George, you used the analogy of the Southern District of New York, the Sovereign District of New York, where Joey Merlino was indicted. 42 defendants, everybody pled guilty, Joey went, except Joey. He went to trial and then ended up pleading, first time ever in his life. In this case, if everybody, the last two jump on board here, 14 out of 50. Yeah. Like guilty and 14 out of 15 are going to get some amount of jail time here. Yeah. And from that perspective, it's a win for the feds. It's, you know, guys go to jail, guys plead guilty. Guys got that on the jacket. Now they got priors. The, 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 everything is about numbers and formula. Next time these guys are jammed up, the numbers will be higher. There's a, it's a win for all of those reasons. From a wise guy's perspective, you know, if I'm looking at 15 and I'm getting four, for me, that might be a win, you know? Yeah. So and it's, it's- Good. My social media uh, yesterday after I put out that Sonny Mazzone had pled guilty is, of course, exploding with comments similar to with all the carjackings and murders in Philadelphia and the violent crime in Philadelphia. Why do you guys, meaning the feds, continue to focus on this, continue to go after this? You're wasting our money. You're wasting resources. Start putting away murders and carjackers. Make us safe again kind of thing. And that kind of rings true. I'm sorry, but it does. I mean, I covered crime in Philadelphia when I was at Fox. You did. Uh, these are serious crimes being committed in Philadelphia. I don't know that gambling and loan sharking reaches that level. Yeah, well, that's 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 one part of the argument, and that's true. The, the question is, is it an either-or thing? If they're doing this, are they not doing that? Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's true. I think the feds are looking at all of this. The other thing in terms of why are they doing this um, Johnny Casasanto, Ronnie Turchi, uh, Raymond Long, John Mortarano. The, the, there are investigators who believe that this crew literally got away with murder. Mm-hmm. And so they're not going to let up. That's what's driving them. It's not about this 
this particular uh, bookmaking operation or this making ceremony. It's about those unsolved murders, uh, Billy Vesey. I mean, all of those are sitting on the table. And these guys, the investigators, believe they know who did it. They know why it was done. Haven't been able to prove it. So sometimes you have a discussion with one of these guys and they'll complain, you know, why I, I just, you know, I'm trying to be legit. Why don't they leave me alone? And I say, because they believe you got away with murder. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, if you did or didn't, I'm not asking you if you did or didn't, mm-hmm. but that's what they believe. And that's why they're never going to run. That's, now, that's the, the long game. Am I right, George? The long game is what they're looking at, not the short game. The long game. But eventually, and if we're getting to that point, the investigators that believe that are going to retire. Mm-hmm. And the, and the next set of, of squad one or whatever, they don't they don't really give a damn about any of this. Yeah. You know, they, it doesn't have the same impact. But yeah. if you were an investigator who was there when those murders went down, you know, that's you, you want to solve those murders. You and it's frustrating because you think you know who did it and why, and you can't make the case. Mm-hmm. So anytime you can tweak these guys, if it's a gambling loan sharking case, you tweak them. If it's a drug case, mm-hmm. you bang them. Yeah. And you hope somebody decides, here, I'm gonna give you the information. Yeah. I think that's what drives all of this. All right. Any thoughts that maybe they're getting these gambling, loan sharking, and some drug charges off the table because maybe there's something else coming behind it? Um, your thoughts, Joe Servideo, I would think if he can get a deal where he can do a concurrent sentence with his current 15-year sentence out of Jersey on drugs, he's already done four of it. If he can get a concurrent deal, he might come into the fold. Let's see what he does. Danny Malatesta Sr., I'm sure there's something in the works there. There's a couple of others. Joe Malone, that's all being worked on from what I hear. Uh, Louis Sheep, same thing. They're working on uh, potential deals there as as well, that kind of thing. Uh, Your thoughts? Well, you know, I I think they're always trying. They're always trying to put pressure on these guys. I don't think – I think what we had in this particular case was not enough pressure, Mm. not enough to make anybody cooperate. Yeah. You know, and the other thing, the other thing that was floating around out there was that the case against Nicodemo and his father. Right. You know, where where was that? And again, that's a gambling case. Is that enough to pressure anybody? I yeah. don't think so. Yeah, that's a gambling loan sharking case. Anthony Nicodemo's doing twenty five to fifty years for murder. He's already ten years into it from twenty twelve. Um, that murder is also still out there. Who the shooter is in the Gino DiPietro hit? That's one of the ones you talk about. In yeah. addition. Let's talk about Anthony Persiano for a second, George. What should he get? His sentencing's been put well, off. I think we're going to see. Yeah, I think we're going to see now that this is all resolved. He, mm-hmm. he's, he has to get sentenced. You know, and, and you, you want to start talking about sentencing hearing where victims come in. Yeah, I mean the people he ripped off. I think have a right to show up if he's going to be sentenced, and that'll be interesting to see how yeah. that plays out. Yeah, you know, he's out there somewhere. God knows where. He uh, very. His bail, I don't know if he had bail. Mm. He's, he's out there somewhere in America yeah. working out as a, an adjuster, you know, yeah. construction. That's what he did with, with the ripoffs. Yeah. So God only knows. It, it's, the, the feds made a deal with the devil here, and, and it almost blew up in their face. I think that's why they're happy to walk away with what they got in this Yeah, case. I mean, they got really good tapes here, no doubt about that. Yeah. Tapes probably we've never heard before. There's been an induction ceremony before. Kind of situation, but these these are very 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 good tapes. There's no doubt about that, and he did get them that. Um, but then the question is, what else came along with it, and what does he get? And I know some of those victims who you've spoken to and I've spoken to want to see him get pounded here. Uh, some yeah. of these guys get promised five years and end up getting ten or twelve. Uh, there's no violence here for Anthony Persiano that I'm aware of, but he truly uh, hurt some individuals financially. Oh, no doubt about that. And if they- get a chance to get in front of the judge. It may have an impact on his ultimate sentence. The other irony is yeah. in, in all of this is you keep coming back to what was Persiano even doing at that table? Persiano was with Palillo and Scarfo in the first plus stuff. Yeah. You know, and why, why was this particular organization bringing him in? Except that it comes down to money and greed. Yeah. There's no reason to make it to be, to have Persiano around you given his background. Yeah, you know, but he was. Yeah, and they, the, the the mob paid a significant price for that lack of foresight or mm. for the greed that said, "Yeah, let's deal with this guy because he's a moneymaker." Yeah, and the drugs are verboten kind of thing here is bullshit. Obviously, we see from this case that they're doing them 
They're involved in them. And there were a number of individuals in this case who pled guilty, pled guilty. Everybody who criticizes me out there for talking about some of these guys. These guys pled guilty to selling heroin pills laced with fentanyl. 100,000 plus people die in this country in the last couple of years from that. These are not, uh, you know, recreational marijuana we're talking about here. Uh, things like that or perks or anything like that. We're talking about opioids. We're talking about heroin. We're talking about fentanyl that can kill you. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the one of the more fascinating tapes is once the videos on that talking about all that. And mm. why do I do it? Because I like money. And this is the only way to make money. Yeah. You know, it's just there's no morality. It's an amoral operation. It's yeah. about it's greed and it's cash. Yeah. George, what is the, the elimination of? 14 out of 15 defendants due to the organization now. Um, not an overly strong organization. If you talk to some folks around the country in the mob watchers world, uh, this is a whole wing of it that goes away, at least for, a, you know, two to five, yeah. two to six years. Um, yeah. The money dries up it's, even more. It's three or four made guys and a bunch of associates. It's a crew and, and it's, it's, a, it's a money generating crew. So, yeah, to, to the extent that they're off the streets and not operating, there's less money flowing up. But, you know, we've talked about this before, flowing up to whom mm-hmm. and for what. There's just not a lot going on out yeah. there. And these guys, you know, I mean, this is a fascinating question that I've asked again and again and again. Joey down in Florida, living a nice mm-hmm. life. How's he doing? Yeah. We, you know, what, what are his sources of income? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a fascinating question, you know, and I know the feds are asking the same question. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess he's been able to show legitimate money coming from somewhere. Yeah. But, uh, and you got to wonder kind of what's going through his mind here and the guys, what's going through their mind about what he's doing and they're about to go do jail time. I mean, with all, with all due respect, if they're all part of the same organization, LCN, La Familia, if they're all part of the same crew, and your guys are going away and that guy's working on his tan and doing whatever he's doing down in Florida. I'm sorry, but best friends or not, I'm sure there's a little bit of animosity there about all this. Yeah, maybe. I mean, for some guys, for other guys, there's a personal friendship yeah. that goes past Cosa Nostra and, and, you know, they've been on the same street corner since yeah. they were 10 The guys from the corner out. let it go, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think that's... That's been the strength of this particular group. It's not about the uh, Omerta and Cosa Nostra. It's about the guys from whatever the name, the Tethan Wolf, whatever they mm-hmm. grew up. These are the guys from the mm-hmm. corner, and they know each other from back then, and they're not going to give up each other. That's why we've never seen a significant cooperator uh, out of this group, mm-hmm. I think, and probably why we never yeah. will. Um, at this point, do you think it's worth bringing another charge, bringing another case? Well, you if know, it doesn't, we keep it's got to include murders, right? Through. If you don't have the murders, why yeah. come again? Unless you have some significant exactly. drug operation or something like that. Let me say that the totals from what I hear on these drug charges was around fifty thousand dollars. It's not that's not a lot in the drug world, you know. No, maybe a hundred, maybe a hundred total. So, do you bring another case if you don't have the hammer? I don't think you do. I mean, we've, you know, we've talked about this before. I think this didn't go where they wanted it to go. I think they were hoping to flip somebody. They couldn't. Uh, unless you can bring some murder charges where somebody's looking at, you know, you're going to go away for the rest of your life. Talk to us. Help yourself. That kind of thing. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. And I don't know that they can do that. I don't know. You know, some of these murders are so old now. What do you got? How are you going to make the case without a cooperator? And how are you going to get a cooperator? without the leverage to make them flip. It's, it's one of those things where the chicken yeah. and egg kind of thing. I don't know that, yeah. that it can happen. Now, if somebody does something stupid and gets jammed up for in a major drug case because they got greedy and he wants to use that, his knowledge to get out from under that, that's conceivable, but yeah, I think it's a long I got to say, George, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get a trial or two out of this. Um, from a reporter perspective, because that's who we are, that's who we were for our entire careers, um, your thoughts. I mean, I kind of was looking forward to hearing some good tapes, seeing some really good lawyering, uh, some good prosecution. Jonathan Ortiz is the main guy for the U.S. Attorney's Office on this. 
hell of a lawyer from what I hear and a great prosecutor. John Maringolo, Lou Busico, uh, Brian McMonagle was in this case. Bill Brennan's in this case. There's a lot. Uh, Rocco uh, is in this case. Um, you know, these these are all role, yeah. good lawyers. It would have been, it would have been a hell of a scene to watch, I think. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, that's one of the things I miss about uh, when I was a reporter and when the paper and the media had the resources to mm. go cover that trial. There's there's a lot of drama. And there's a, it's, yeah. it's almost a show if, if, if it's well presented and you, you follow the threats. I don't know that we're going to see that again in the, in the day of COVID. Uh, I think nobody wants to go to trial. And even even in this particular case, it better go into trial instead of 10, 12, 15 defendants yeah. would have been one or two. two. That's the way it plays out. Still could be interesting, but uh, I think yeah. those... We were fortunate in our heyday, George, to have seen those trials, the two Stanford trials. You saw all the Scarfo trials. I covered them when I was in a, a print media guy. And, and then the one Joe Merlino case, there was the Joe Legambi, George Borghese case in 2013. Um, we were fortunate in our heyday to see those things, hear those tapes, see those witnesses, cooperators, victims, things like that. We didn't just get the news story for the day, but you got a whole lot more. Yeah, you pick up a lot of information, you can build stories on that. That's one of the things that's unfortunate in terms of the media not having the resources they used to have. Because if there was a big trial, I'm not sure you would get the day-to-day coverage that we used to be able to give because the Inquirer had a lot of people. Television stations have more people, and you can spend the time. People don't realize good reporting yeah. is labor intensive, and uh, now yeah. and those mob time. trials were the birthing for mobtalksitdown.com. We started mob talk uh, during the, uh, the Joey Merlino trial with uh, our good friend Angelo Lutz, restaurant tour. Angelo Lutz. That, that was a springboard, and we've been we've been jumping ever yeah. since, man. And I, I so, tell you, George. Uh, uh, from my perspective, and I know a lot of your readers, people who've read your books, uh, always look forward to that Sunday piece on either the front page or the first page of the Metro section where George would sit back on Friday, gather up all the little things that didn't make it into the Daily Story and and right. somehow make it something exactly. that you just didn't want to put down on a Sunday on the beach over a cup of coffee on a Sunday morning when that paper rolled in or you got online and got it. Uh, those were classics, George. I'm blowing smoke at you, but it's real smoke. No, no, thank you. It was very enjoyable to me. And that's when you can take the step back and, and give some perspective or stuff that happens at the trial that you can't fit in the daily story that you got a place for. Uh, and like I said, I think most yeah. of that is by the yeah. boards now. I have to tell you, I miss those days, George. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I don't mind not over. sitting on those hardwood benches in federal court for months on end, but, uh, my back's a little better now, but uh, I do miss those. Those were great stories. Yeah, they generated uh, a real storytelling in the city of Philadelphia, uh, unfortunately, at some people's expense. Uh, but they know what they did. They know what they pled guilty to or were convicted of. And, you know, you do the time. You got to, you know, you do the crime. You got to do the time. So, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's part of the All right, Professor, as I like yeah. to call you, thank you for joining us for a uh, very intriguing uh 45 minutes and thanks again for coming on. Uh, we do have another plea coming up in about a week that Stephen Mazzone going to plead uh, probably to the racketeering conspiracy charges. He's looking at anywhere from what we hear 45 to 60 months. Uh, we'll see if that takes place and we'll probably talk about that the next time a little bit, see what else maybe they include in his plea agreement. They always throw a couple of tidbits in there and then we'll see where this thing goes next, George. So uh, I'm sure there's a, there's a podcast coming sure. down the road with you and I again. All right, George, thanks for joining us, folks. Thank you for joining us again this week. Very, very interesting conversation with my good pal, George Anastasia. Thanks for joining us on Philly Prime, and we'll see you next time.